And uh, there were three strangers in the room. And they were BATF agents. And they handed us each a document. And they said, Sheriffs, these are your marching orders from Congress as to what you will do to comply with the Brady Bill. Your sheriffs are now being commandeered by the federal government to do federal bidding. And for the first time in United States history, an unconstitutional, unfunded mandate carried with it, like no money, there's no bribery this time, it simply had a threat of arrest if we failed to comply. First time in U.S. history. No sheriff in that room liked it. No sheriff wanted it. But in the final analysis, when we all went around the table and asked, what are you going to do? They all said, you can't fight City Hall. There's nothing we can do. Who wants you to believe that propaganda? You can't fight City Hall. Well, City Hall. They're the ones who came up with it. Especially the City Hall in Washington, D.C. And so let me, let me tell you that if any other sheriff in that room had said, I'm just not going to do it, I would have said, that's, that's the answer. We just got to tell them, no, we're not going to do it. That did cross, cross my mind at that time and, and was even my suggestion to the other sheriffs. But now I'm going home, driving home from Phoenix to Safford, which is about three hours, and about halfway home, I'm in Globe, and I decided that two things. I am not going to comply, and I'm not going to quit my job. And so now I have a conflict, don't I? How am I going to get out of this? By the time I drove into my driveway in Thatcher, uh, it hit me, and it actually scared me to death. I'm going to sue my own government. Oh, wonderful. I'll bet my wife is just dying to hear that. <laughs> so, so I'm not preoccupied with this decision. I just walk into the house, and there's the pretty little blonde girl, and she's about ready to give me a hug because, you know, this is late, now we haven't seen each other all day, and she kind of did that sort of thing when I came home from work anyway. And uh, I just blurted it out. I'm going to sue the Clinton administration. I'm going to sue the federal government. They're going to squash me like a little pumpkin seed. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> yeah. She's just going, don't I get a kiss? Uh, yeah, okay. But I said, uh, I really am going to sue the federal government. And it's going to cost us everything. Home, career, job, everything. Ladies, let me tell you right, right now. The decision to do this happened with this little woman. Amen. If she had said anything like what normal uh, wife would say, Are you nuts? <laughs> Look at all we did to get this job and you're willing to throw it all away? We have five kids! Have you thought about them? The windmills are real, Mac. You, go, you want to go on this Quixote crusade? The windmills fight back this time. And she didn't say any of that. She knows how much I love Don Quixote, so I thought that would be one she would say. <laughs> she just said, well, we weren't really looking for a job when we landed this one. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll take that as a yes. Now I go to work the next day. Somebody want to tell me what I do? I didn't take to the federal government 101. What do you do? Oh, I know. I'll call a local lawyer in Saffron. One of my friends downtown. He'll say, are you nuts? Didn't your wife tell you you can't fight City Hall? I said, no, but every sheriff did. You know, I was not a member of anything. I was not a member of even the NRA. I wasn't a member of anything. No right wing groups, no JDS, no nothing. I could have called any of them. I didn't know what to do. My undersheriff walks in. He's a member of the, the NRA. I said, Mike, does the NRA have uh, a toll free number where you can call and get advice? He says, There's a toll free number. I don't know what you're going to get. I called it. I finally landed, finally landed in the office of Richard Gardner. And he said, I told him what I wanted to do. He said, Sheriff, we've already been preparing the paperwork on this case, and we've been praying that you would call. <laughs> and I said, Hallelujah. <laughs> and he, took me, uh, 
he quickly informed me that we were only going to be uh, suing on the Tenth Amendment. I said, not on the Second. He says, you have no standing, but he said, the Tenth Amendment might even be stronger. He said, the federal government has no authority to tell you what to do. And I said, even better. Let's go. And I said, I want my own lawyer, though. I said, I don't want this to be the NRA case. I want my own lawyer. He said, that's fine with us. And I said, can you recommend one out here in Arizona? And he said, Dave Hardy in Tucson. He used to work for us. So I called Hardy and he paid him as my personal lawyer. And on February 28, 1994, in Federal District Court in Tucson, we filed before Judge John Roll, Mack, Sheriff Mack, God rest his soul is right, Sheriff Mack versus United States. And uh, then, about four weeks later, Sheriff Prince from Montana joined this lawsuit, and then five others from across the, the nation. Only one in Texas, out of 254 sheriffs, only one. Seven sheriffs, the magnificent seven, seven <laughs> sheriffs suing the federal government to stop federal intrusions and intervention, overreach, and gun control. Seven out of 3,100. Okay? Uh, and believe me, most of the other sheriffs in Arizona were like, well, oh no, don't want anything to do with this. Not at all. Uh, they didn't like it, but they certainly weren't going to fight. And it was, it was kind of a shame to see all that. So, pursuant to that case, and pursuant to my uh, almost 20 years in law enforcement, I came up with a book when Obama won the presidency. But I actually started this before I knew who was going to win. Because I was so dismayed and discouraged by watching this process called the 2008 presidential election. I called it the 2008 destruction of America. And I was looking at this one. And I said, what's the answer? And I said, why don't you put it all together? You've been studying this stuff for 15 years. Put it in a book. Let people know that there's an answer. And the title just hit me and it says, The County Sheriff, America's Last Hope. Wouldn't you rather count on your sheriff in Washington, D.C.? <laughs> just a side thought. Okay, so I put the book together and then uh, a group uh, here in Mesa, uh, the JDS, uh, asked me to speak and I told them that I'd be bringing that book. And uh, that was the first place I ever had the book. And then... Uh, for some strange reason, right about that same time, uh, Joyce Riley of the Power Hour and Alex Jones both called me and said, Sheriff, we haven't had you on the show for a while. What have you been up to? And I said, I just got a new book uh, called The County Sheriff of America's Last Hope. And then after that, uh, I couldn't even keep the job I had at the time because requests for speaking engagements just went crazy and all over the country and uh, had to quit my job and uh, I do this full time now and uh, I'll tell you what, I've never been uh, so grateful to be part of the freedom movement in my life. I'm grateful to be busy because there are sheriffs and people waking up to the fact that sheriffs can nullify the uh, tyranny of the federal government. And not only that, I have a Supreme Court decision that completely bears this out. Now, state sovereignty is what this issue is what this case is. You have in your hand a synopsis and the highlights of the Mac Prince Supreme Court decision. Now, we've already said that, and I'll tell you right now, it was never intended. Do you think the founding fathers actually intended for the United States Supreme Court to determine what freedom is to Americans? Not even, of course not. That's ridiculous. But this time, the Supreme Court simply did what they're supposed to do. Reinforce the Constitution. And give you a historical perspective of why the federal government can't tell me what to do in the Brady Bill. And they can't tell your state what to do in anything. So if the federal government has not that authority, how did the EPA get it? They have even less. They can't give what they don't have. So, the bottom line question then is I ask it here and ask in my book and ask every place else. Who is responsible for freedom? In your state. In your county. So your sheriff doesn't have to do it? Or your county commissioners don't have to be worried about it? Of course. And of course it's we are. And of course, every judge 
every sheriff, every cop, every chief of police, every county commissioner, every state rep, every governor had the same responsibility to stand for freedom. Even if the Supreme Court says no, I still have to keep my oath to the Constitution. If they violate the Constitution, does that mean I go along? No, I swore an oath to the Constitution. I can't violate the Constitution. Oh, well, sure, you get to pick and choose. We don't get to pick and choose in law enforcement. What we enforce? I said, that is right. You're bound by your oath to follow the Constitution. If it's outside the Constitution, you can't do it. Well, how am I supposed to determine that? Read it. <laughs> now you can determine it. There's not a lot of gray area. Like uh, Stuart was talking earlier, Congress shall make no law. That's pretty easy. And if they do, you have to oppose it, Sheriff, Governor, State Rep, County Commissioners. And this is something that should be happening now because it's our job. Let's go over this just a little bit. Go with me, okay? Look at the first principle that we're really talking about. Right on the inside, okay? Don't turn to a page, just turn to the inside cover. At the top, it's James Madison from the Federalist Papers. And this quote is also in the book, The County Sheriff's American Last Note. But this is my, one of my favorite quotes. James Madison is actually telling us what state sovereignty is about. We can safely rely on the disposition of state legislatures to erect barriers against the encroachments of the national authority. Can it get any clearer than that? The responsibility of your state legislature is to nullify now. That's your job. And if they need some reinforcement of that, have them read this decision. And have them read the Tenth Amendment, which is the next one. The power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution. Leave out the next line. Are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. That's easy to understand that way. It doesn't change the Tenth Amendment. It just leaves out that line, one of the little lines. Anything not in Article 1, Section 8 of the Enumerated Powers belongs to the states or to the people. Pretty simple. Let's go to page 2. Judge Roll, God bless his soul. This is his quote. This is his quote. Look at that. You see what that man said? It's in bold on page 2. Mac is thus forced to choose between keeping his oath or obeying the act, subjecting himself to possible sanctions. Can you believe that a federal district court judge actually grasped the entire motivation that I had in my heart? Well, I was going through in the quandary that I was forced to be in by my own government. I'm forced to choose between keeping my oath or obeying their stupid law. <laughs> 